Welcome to The Gym's Podcast. I'm your host, Joel Kleber, and this podcast is designed to share stories of our franchisees, franchisors, Jim himself, and other members of The Gym's family that we think you might find interesting. If you are researching our brand, we've got a previous back catalogue. There's so many great episodes that you can find online. If you do like what you hear, please make sure you leave us a thumbs up on YouTube if you're watching or online as well. We really do appreciate the support. Without further ado, here's today's episode. We're joined today by Liam Scarrett from Jim's Cleaning Waikiki. And we actually called up a long time ago when you just started. I think we did an interview. So it's good to be able to catch up again and follow up with how you're going. Um, I think since 2020, I think you started, I think, was it? It was, yes. Yeah, 2020. So you're one of our um, Jim's group, a core vouchers as well. So it's a silver membership. I think it's worth like $600 or $700. And you basically get two free nights at any core hotel. I think it's like 50% of your dining bill at various restaurants and discounts and drinks and all that sort of stuff. So it's a good good thing to have from us and it's on behalf of the gyms group that we present you that for you good customer service as well i had a look at your record and before coming on here and you know perfect five star rating um you know you got great reviews from customers and i presume because your reviews are low i mean you don't take many leads anymore so you've got a lot of regular customers with you that are staying for a long time which is which is great to hear yeah thank you for that yeah no we we've i did turn off leads for quite some time but recently now that there's eight of us um doing Jace. Eight of us, yeah. You're eight now, yep. Yep, so it's huge growth since 2020. I've turned on the a lot of leads just to try and, you know, make sure well, we've all got close to full-time hours. So it's, um, yeah, and probably by the end of this year, probably have to hire somebody else. So, yeah, it's gone really good. That's great. So eight people. So how have you, like, you had that plan, I think, when we originally started, you wanted to grow the business and, and things like that. So it's great to hear how you got eight. Are they all full-time staff with you now or? No, the most of them are part-time. But we usually boost them up to, you know, the average about 30 hours a week. You know, a couple of them do between 10 and 20 hours a week as well. So, um, but yeah, the the main three, which is yeah, um, Courtney, Tyra and, and Mallory, they they do 30 plus hours a week. So yeah, no, that's gone really good and we're all enjoying it. And how have you managed to find employees? It's a big problem for many gyms, franchisees and just for business owners in general. So do you want to run through how you've been able to find your employees and how do you keep them? I'd say seventy percent of it's pretty easy because it's family. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Tyra, Tyra's been with me since twenty twenty as well, and she's been very uh, loyal and reliable the whole time. And understanding that we were building a business, and she wanted to be a part of that. Friends of the family have also come across to help out and and do their bit. But when we do hire people outside of the family and family friends, we make sure that. You know, we go we go is like dome to have a coffee and just sit down. It's not a major sort of interview. It's just you know seeing if they gel with the team and you know, seeing what they want to do with the team and yeah, just if, if they're happy to be part of it and understand what we're trying to build as a a business, I guess. So, yeah, and yeah. What what are you telling? Like, what are you trying to build in regards to your business? Is it something where you've got a deliberate plan and you just keep wanting to get bigger, or what do you tell these people who come on board with you or how they join your business? Well, I explained to them where, yeah, we clean for our clients, um, which is great, but it's not just about cleaning houses. Um, it, it's about mental health for our clients because, you know, if you walk in after a long week of work and, you know, your house is clean, it takes that relief off the family because then they can spend that time with their with their friends and family without having to think of cleaning their homes. And also we've got other goals as well um, that we're trying to build in the new financial year that we put funds aside from each vacate um, to do free cleans for deserving people in the community that aren't even our regular clients, just people that are in need, you know. So we're trying to build a business based off helping the community. Um, and I guess when, if people, if that strikes people's, you know, heartstrings um, that want to work for us, then they're in it for the right reasons. So, and that's, that's what we look for, people that are excited to be part of a business structure that is you know, evolves around the community. That's great to hear. And how do you maintain quality in your business with having employees? Because that can be a struggle for people as well. So how have you been able to maintain such great quality and you haven't got one complaint, so that's an amazing achievement. So how have you been able to maintain that, especially in cleaning, where cleaning customers, it's in their home, they probably, they might be a bit more pickier than other divisions in the gyms group. So how, how have you been able to maintain that perfect record? Well, when they first, you know, join our team, um, there's one-on-one -on -one training for the first few weeks. So I'm always, whatever jobs they're at, I'm always with them. Um, if I'm not with them, if I can't be with them, then Tyra, who's a team leader, 
is also quite good. So she, they go tag along with Tyra. So, and it's not just that because we work in teams of twos and threes, as I guess, as we're mopping out of a house, we all quickly look over each other's work and have, you know, a cloth on us and make sure if we miss something, then, you know, we, we quickly, quickly just clean it up or, you know, and, and let each other know and help each other build and grow. It's about helping each other. And if we help each other and, you know, more eyes on something is better than the one pair. So yeah, we just, we just help each other out. So, yeah. And how have you been enjoying the business growth so far in that whole process with what you've been doing? And um, look, it's not always easy. The first year was initially trying to find the right people for the business is, is difficult. But once you find them, it's exciting because, you know, you can start going, yep, this we're working towards a goal and I can, I can feel it happening. So you just keep working towards it and you do always have, you know, roadblocks, but you just keep fighting through them and uh, working around it. And what's been um, some of the most surprising things maybe you've learned from going through your journey so far? What, what's the, has there been anything surprising you in your own business or like you, in regards to maybe let's say level of work or just the much you're enjoying it or what's what's been surprising to you in the journey so far? I get excited by how good like the, the team is. Like I try to be humble about it, but when we do a vacate, for example, I always, I'm the last person to leave a vacate and it just blows my mind that it doesn't matter how bad the house is, when, I, when I'm walking through and mopping back out, the difference in the house, it, it, it just it blows my mind of how good a team and the quality that my team do. That's fantastic to hear. Now let's talk about the um, products you use in your business. So maybe you're an outline for customers. What types of products are you using in the homes when you do your jobs? Um, yeah, so we use fit for purpose products. So the bathroom cleaner from gyms and the kitchen cleaner and multi-purpose. Uh, we also use a product called Halo, which is very hard to get sometimes. It's like liquid gold. So basically the Halo, probably I think it's the best window cleaner on the market, like Windex, for example. But we polish after we clean everything, we polish everything. Um, so it's, everything gets double cleaned. Yeah, that just makes it really good. But because it's fit for purpose, the the products that we use, it it's great for our clients as well and their pets. So they don't get affected by it. So yeah, using the gym's product is pretty good. And actually that surprises me of how good it helps reduce the mold in mean, showers, for example, with the products from gyms. I know they're enzyme based. So I think from my knowledge, they're, um, they keep eating away once you clean because it's enzyme based and they're all natural and stuff. And you don't get those nasty smells like I remember growing up, you know, the mum might use domestos or something and it smelled like a, you could smell the chemicals in it, right? Whereas with those sorts of products, I've actually used it myself. Um, you can't smell anything as well and it's, um, and it works as well, which is, which is even more important. It's, it's pretty good for the environment from what I know from looking at it. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. And with customers, I think being a bit more conscious now as well, what they're putting into their home, you know, I think if you've got kids and you've got pets crawling around on floors and stuff. I think knowing that the products that you use is, is 100% safe is um, definitely going to be a good selling benefit compared to maybe other providers moving forward. Mm, yeah, yep, definitely, mate. Yeah. And let's talk about now the, um, your like what's good customer service to you? So maybe just an outline from, let's say, you get a lead or from when it's someone requests a quote or take us through the whole process, what a good cleaning franchisee does and what you do in your business. Um, so as soon as I get a notification, I'm pretty much on my phone and ringing them straight away making sure that you know i'm there and I'm, I'm that the team is ready and willing to help them out so that's that's the starting point is so many times especially recently i'll get the notification while the phone's in my hand and i pretty much push dial and they're like geez that's quick yeah <laughs> and um as soon as that happens i feel like they're they're already easy to talk to like they're they just open up to me straight away uh, but it's also about honesty if you go to the client's house and you know and try and talk rubbish to them they're going to pick up on it you know so it's, it's you've always just got to be honest with with any approach that you do so yeah well maybe what's some advice around maybe quoting and stuff because i know quoting is a big problem sometimes for franchisees especially in the early days and i presume thinking back to your early days you might have made you know from your quoting experience so maybe what's some advice to maybe other franchisees or newer ones especially around quoting especially in clean so once you've spoken to the client on the phone and you've set a date and a time to go and quote their their homes stick to it you know be five minutes early to what you promised them and then walk through the house let the client show you what they want done and then you explain through every process so they'll show you the bathrooms and en suites and kitchen and, and you tell them what you're going to be doing 
as part of our process. I mean, for a regular clean, you can't do everything in the one clean straight up, you know, because it's just going to take too long to do everything. So you just explain to them, honestly, look, over the first couple of cleans, you know, we'll still do your general clean, but the first clean we're going to focus on cobwebs in front of cupboards and the next clean we're going to focus on light switches. And you just, like I said, you'd be open and honest with it and, and explain that, you know, you're not going to get to everything straight away, but this is our process and, and we're going to make sure that once we get on top of your home after the first two or three cleans, we're going to maintain it for you so you won't have to worry about it and just make them feel at ease knowing that, you know, they're paying us to do a quality job. Yeah, you just make sure that, yeah, we're doing that. We're being honest and truthful with them, so. And what to you, Liam, is the diff? Because there's a lot of, obviously, people, you know, with cleaning, especially, there's a lot of cleaners around. So what's the difference between using a gym's cleaning franchise, or let's say you in particular in your business, from knowing maybe some other, let's say, independents or non-gyms people? What's the difference in expectations or standards from your perspective? Look, there are some, in our area, there are some good cleaners from other brands, but there is a lot when it comes to quality, we don't like to miss things and we pride ourselves making sure we, you know, get what we can and, and making sure the job's done. Whereas, for example, a lot of clients recently will send me photos saying, can you help me? I want new cleaners. This is why they'll send me photos of the shower, you know, having streak marks all through the glass or, you know, the top of a range would not clean, wipe down or just a simple thing, not not even the hard parts of the job, just, it's just, just the simple things is what people want to see and let's well let's outline some of those so let, when you do a clean for example i know things will different depending on what the client asks and stuff but what to you is the just the stand like a standard thing that people need to do like you mentioned about the streaks obviously in the shower and ranges and stuff so what are some standard things that might seem pretty obvious to you but might not be to um people in regards to expect when they use a cleaning service yeah i, I think when we when i spoke about halo earlier polishing I think that's one major part of our process that makes a difference because anyone can go out and, and clean a shower or clean a toilet. Uh, but when you polish the shower, the mirrors, the toilet with a dried cloth, if you've missed any hairs or dust and you go back over it with the polish, it takes away all that excess that you might have missed when you first cleaned it. So it makes everything sparkle and there's nothing left over. I think that's one of the major things that our clients notice the difference in what are they called in cleaning i think in training the wow factor That's so yeah. yeah so what are some of the wow factor things you do you do for some of your customers are there certain customers you do certain things for that might because you know that that's what they like or that's what they come to expect yeah based on the obviously every home and client is different um but once once you've been to their home a few times you can under, you can understand where they might fall behind for example if they got kids their children that day might not listen and, you know, they might leave their toys or clothes on the floor. So, you know, we'll go in and we'll tidy it up for them or, yeah, might make it make their beds for them. It's just doing little extra things that might take an extra, you know, five minutes that changes the whole aspect of the appreciation when the client walks in from, from work and goes, oh, my goodness, you know, I, I was meaning to do that this morning, so thank you, you know. So the amount of times that we get messages you know, from clients that have just arrived home from work going, I walked home, I got home and I couldn't believe this was still my house, you know, because we tidied up for them. It's doing those extra little things that might take you five minutes that the clients appreciate. It's great to hear. Now, from being in business, you know, for three years now, what what do you like about the gym system or what have you liked about being in, in the business? Is there is it things like, you know, you can expand and you, there's no extra fees in terms of expansion or is it support or what, what do you like about the gym system so far i just find it um you know that gym's head office is there right but you still feel and you are i mean you're in control of your own business but i've just find it easy so easy to get jobs if i if i don't want new jobs coming in i turn off the jobs if i want jobs coming in guaranteed that if i turn on that day i want to get something you know so it's 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 easy and the fact is i can build the business up as quick or slow as i want and, and that's a great thing. I mean, with, with Cell and the, the team as well, the franchisors, they're very supportive. Um, if I have any question, then, you know, they will, if they don't know the answer, they'll go and check it and they'll get back to me as soon as they can. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's everything just makes it easy to just yeah, make everything flow. And looking back on your, on your business so far, is there anything you would have done maybe differently in the earlier days if you had the knowledge you do now or would you do everything pretty much the same? 
probably would have done it the same. Obviously, you learn different things as as you know your business progresses, or you know you might find out different things. Some things could have been handled a bit better in certain circumstances, but that's what you learn from is those either mistakes or you know things you don't understand when you're fresh to something. So, but no, I wouldn't change anything. It's um, I've been very fortunate and lucky to be in the position I am, and they're yeah, grateful for for all of it. Now you don't have to say how much you're making, but are you happy with the level of income you're making in your business? It's taken three years, but I purposely grew my business slowly. So I could get the right people and train and, you know, get the right clients and and doing the proper job first. But now, obviously, after those three years, it's now starting to be a lot easier financially because obviously paying wages and all that is the easiest thing because that's obviously that's a direct cost to the business. But now, obviously, with everything in place and we built we built that foundation, yeah, it's it's very comfortable. So what's your plans for the business? Because as you see, you got the foundation now, and you've got you know you you got really good experience. So are you? Is it more of a you know you want to get to an employee, certain employee size or a certain amount of client size? Or what's your sort of vision for maybe the next couple of years? What are you planning to do? Yeah, we just want to keep. We want to keep building, but we also want to keep that the high quality standard and and local a family run business feel that our clients get. You know, because I think that's a major part of what we do is people feel like they can talk to us about anything when we're there you know so we want to keep that it's not about getting to the getting to a house rushing through it without doing any quality or standards you know so just keep doing what we're doing and look i've got a personal goal that i want to get to as a as a business income level uh, just to just to go yes i've done that but it's it's to me it's not all about you know the money it's about making sure that you know our clients and the community are looked after that's a great approach now in your time has there been any good customer stories or any client stories that stand out to you regards to maybe um you know some of those comments you said before i'm sure you get them all the time but is there any standout ones to you oh look there's there's quite a lot we we do have this one client who's through ndis um which is a you know we've got quite a few but every week that we go there she's very appreciative of everything we do um, and we can tell that she struggles because um, of her her child her child's disability. And we go in there. We'll we'll always do extra things for her. And uh, yeah, every week we get that notification saying thank you so much. It it made my week so much easier. And so yeah, we get heaps of stories like that. I mean, I could I could be here talking for hours, and but uh, obviously we can't. But yeah, that's that's one that always stands out to me. That's great. And um, in regards to someone looking at cleaning or doing maybe what you were doing three years ago and looking at it, what would you say to them in regards to maybe questions they'll ask or what advice would you give to them? Always ask the basic questions, obviously, when getting into a business and, and make sure that you do have all the information. But just be patient. If if you are going to be heading into your own business, then just be patient with it. Trust the process. Uh, make sure you, you give us the best customer service that you can um, and just keep trying to tick off your goals that you want to do now has the business met your expectations or exceeded when you first started when you think back to 2020 when we first spoke has it has it has it been as it you know as it lives up to the to the hype almost or has it met your expectations it's well exceeded as to what i thought um probably into my when i first started i think we spoke about a five-year plan mm. um i've already uh, you know year three and I've already passed my year five expectations. So, oh, yeah, it's yeah, well exceeded as to what I want. To, to, that's, yeah. that's great. You seem to have a really good, like, three-part system. You know, you've got your community aspect. You've got your family involved, which is great to have that relationships. And also, you've got um, great business in what you're doing uh, with customers. You obviously run a great, great operation. Yeah, as I said, you haven't had a complaint from what I can see at all, which is which is remarkable and cleaning because, um, obviously, you know, customers – it can be a bit pickier sometimes, especially in some a division like cleaning. So it's a really remarkable achievement what you do. Mm, thank you very much for that. No worries. Is there anything else I haven't asked you or maybe you want to share um, before I let you go? No, I guess it's just in, in regards to the community thing. It's like... Yeah. Let's talk, let's talk about that actually. Maybe maybe talk about community and maybe talk about how other franchisees maybe... Talk about what you're doing, but obviously you mentioned a bit earlier, but maybe mm. what do you get out of it as a, as a business owner with doing that? Um, well, look, it's more about... 
well, you know, we don't really get anything financially or anything like that out of it. It's just there's a lot of bad in this world and we want to see some light in it. Um, and we all, everyone that works with us, they all have share the same passion. You know, for example, like, you know, like we donate money to our local cricket club, um, Secret Arbor Dockers Cricket. We've recently done a fundraiser for Lifeline for mental health, um, suicide prevention. And recently we've also uh, a client who was through NDIS, again, was struggling, had a year of pain um, through illnesses and and with her daughter daughter's disability. And the final straw was that their dishwasher blew up. Um, so we went and just bought them a dishwasher. Really? Yeah. And so it's... It's, it's things like that that can um, you know we can't change we can't change the world but we can we can try and make someone's day you know and, and that's what we strive to do. That's great, Liam. I'm glad you said that. We're going to clip that up about the oven thing, and hopefully there's a lot of expectation of customers that they're going to get ovens and stuff. But uh, dish dishwashers, sorry, dishwashers. But uh, that's an amazing amazing story. And please, I encourage you if you do get those stories, send us photos or tell me a bit about them so we'd love to share it online. Yeah, it's thanks. great because we've got a lot of franchisees who, I when I interview, uh, they tell me things exactly like what you've told them. Like, why didn't you tell me before so we can post it online and give you a bit of a shout out? So please, I know you don't do that for that, but um, no, please please let us know about that sort of stuff because it's good to encourage that and share that the gyms franchisees do in the community. I know a lot of you guys do things like that, so thanks for letting me know about that. And um, once again, just want to congratulate you as well for being one of the cool membership winners. Two complimentary nights to stay at any hotel. There's like heaps of them. So it's not only in Australia, overseas as well, up to 50% of your dining bill, but over 40 other restaurants. Percentage of drinks, which is always good. There's a whole bunch of other benefits as well. So um, silver membership, mate. We'll get that to you. It takes around five business days to, to get the email to create an account. And yeah, two two free nights a night for being a star franchisee. So thank you very much for your, your time again tonight, Liam, and catching up. No, thank you. And thank you for the Jim's team for obviously uh, awarding, our, uh, awarding us with that. It would be nice to have a couple of nights away and um yeah a couple of cheeky drinks as well make them we'll make the most of it look you should be able to do a couple of nights away for free it says 50 percent of your dining bill so i'm sure they'll be at the same place and it's something it's 15 percent of drinks so not to be bad you'll get a free drink every, every couple you buy so that's that's <laughs> that's, that's the way to go but um great catching up to you it's really great to see a follow-up from when we did in 2020 then you had your five-year plans so you're already beating it Mm-hmm. And you're doing also other things in the community and stuff like that story about um, the dishwasher. I know that's not something you go out of your way, your way to publicize, but it's great to hear about that thing. And that's just a good example to all of our people who are listening and watch and see this clip of what franchisees like yourself and many others do across Australia. I know there's things and we don't get told about it, so it's hard for us to, to put it online. Um, but it's um, fantastic to hear that. And I'm really, really happy to hear how well you're doing. And you seem really happy as well, which is which is a really good thing as well. Yeah, thank you very much. And it's always good. You know, it makes us makes me even more happier that my fiance is working with us. So, uh, that's great. Yeah. That's awesome. No worries, Liam. Well, thanks, mate. I'll leave you to it and, and have a great night. Thanks, Joel. You too. See you thanks, later. Liam. See you, mate. Thank you for listening to the episode of the Gyms Podcast. If you want to learn more about the Gyms Group, head to gyms.net or call us on 131 546 Australia or 0800 454 654 New Zealand. And if you did like the episode as well, please make sure you leave a review or a comment or a thumbs up or a comment on the video as well. We appreciate your support. And until next episode, we hope you have a great week.